Hi and uh, welcome back to another episode in this series of uh, videos where we're looking at models that I've either finished building from a kit or where I've designed the, the, the kit myself and, and finished that process. Um, today we're looking at something a little a little different, a little bigger than we've looked at before. Um, specifically this um, kit for a self-propelled skip. Um, it's from a kit by IP Engineering. Um, it's in 16mm scale, um, so that's 16mm to the foot. Um, in comparison to the models we've looked at before, which were four millimeters to the foot, so um, you know, four times longer and wider uh, and taller. Um, I mean, as you can see, just if I take the figure out, just the figure um, is probably bigger than some of the models, um, some of the complete locos we've looked at in the in the previous videos. Um, but yeah, I wanted, I'd, I've, having built the, the tiny little models in the previous videos, um, I've fancied trying something a bit different. Um, so I went for something a bit bigger. Um, as I said, this this is a a model for a self-propelled skip. It's it's sold as being um, a Hudson um, self-propelled skip. Um, the skip body itself is designed is based on a, a Hudson design, but I haven't been able to actually find a an example that of a, of a self-propelled skip like this from Hudson. Um, there are other other manufacturers that did make things like this, but um, not one that uses a Hudson skip as far as I've been able to find. But that aside, it's a it's a lovely little kit. Um, as you can probably tell, the skip body itself is kind of um, plastic, uh, whereas pretty much everything else is laser cut wood um, or details that I've I've added. Um, so yeah, so there wasn't you know there wasn't huge amounts of things to put together here. There was a bit of um, preparation of the wood, uh, making sure it was nice and clean, and trying to get rid of all, all the lines. But essentially, all the, the sh all the chassis, you can just about see some of the the lines between the wood here um, where I didn't get it perfect. Um, were all um, so it's like laminations of, of wood um, the cab area I suppose uh, you could call it um, is wood um, the upright supports for the for the skip you can see the best on this end are plastic um, but other than that yeah pretty much everything's uh, everything's wood um, drive is really simple uh, motor single gear onto an axle um, when I originally built this um, I built it for 32 millimeter gauge um, I didn't have any track in, in any um, kind of 16mm scale um, gauges, uh, but I bought some 32mm gauge track uh, from IP Engineering as well. That's also laser cut wood, um, so it was nice and cheap. Uh, one of the reasons for trying this was I wanted to try the, the bigger scale without spending lots and lots of money. And obviously, 16mm um, scale is where you often find things like live steam locomotives, and I didn't want to go get that expensive. Uh, but we'll come on to why this has now been regaged to 45mm. Uh, later, um, but yeah, I had fun building this. Um, as you can see, I added some some details. I said everything that's not wood essentially is was details I added. So I did the the, the brake lever here, um, little little uh, clutch pedal, um, gear rods, brake more brake stuff. I think um, these um, bolts around the edge of the cab area here um, are um, are raised up on the original. Model they were just etched circles um, in in the in the wood, um, but what I did was I added a strip of brass where I'd punched these uh, rivets out. Not having built anything in 16 mm scale before, I didn't actually have anything to punch the rivets, so I made this little rivet press um, on the lathe. So it's just a, I faced off a piece of spare brass and then just gently dug a, a, a drill into it to make a little dimple, uh, a little bit of rounded um, silver steel rod, and then that could just be pulled down with the kind of um, the drill press um, to give me a nice consistent um, dimple, um, and that worked. That worked really well. It was one of the one of the first good uses I put the the lathe to after I after I'd bought it. Um, obviously, I've used it for more lathe like things since, but that was quite nice being able to make my own unsensible toolings. Um, other than detailing, I did make a slight change to the kit instructions. So the instructions say to wire the motor. Um, to the batteries which were inside the skip body by basically drilling a big hole in the bottom of the skip here. Um, now while I could have done that, what it tends to mean is that the wires tend to be on show as they come up here because obviously it's all it's all open. Uh, but what I spotted was that the the supports for the for the skip body are hollow. Um, so I actually drilled two tiny little holes, you can just about see it here, in the bottom underneath the supports, I ran a wire up each each support I need to skip that way that way you can't see the the wires at all um, so yeah when I first built this um, the the only control was an on-off switch hidden beneath this pile of 
um, behind this below this pile of rocks um, and some batteries in the skip and that worked nice and it went round and round the track and I'll, I'll try and put a, a little video up um, but obviously there was no real kind of speed control stop start you kind of had to grab it when you wanted to to stop it but it, it was it was nice it was way into the, into the scale to give me an idea of, of how big um, things were compared to what I'd done before um, it's also the first model where I wrote an article for Garden Rail magazine um, and was actually able to walk into a shop uh, pick up a copy of the magazine and find my article in it which was kind of um, quite of nice for the for the for the yeah it was nice to be able to do that in comparison to everything I've published before where you tend to it tends to be in journals you have to subscribe to or magazines you subscribe to rather than things you buy in the, the high street um, so that was nice yeah so this was this was built uh, a few years ago now and then um, when we had uh, the first uh, lockdown for for Covid um, I actually bought um, one of the LGB starter sets um, the, the garden rail um, starter sets and um, that uses 45 millimeter gauge track so at that point I, I changed the gauge by just pushing the wheels out on the axles um, to give to give a better so I had another another loco because obviously that came with with one loco um, but this was this gave me a second loco I could run around the same track in the garden with my son uh, and that was that was nice um, but in, in the process of doing so I also changed how it um, how it's controlled so now instead of just um, an on off switch you you can see there's actually in here um, there's um hidden underneath all this stuff there's a loco remote uh, remote control board um, and I just um, put a, a, a lithium battery in here and it all fits uh, I'm not gonna plug it together now but it all fits still with the um, the kind of removable load on top uh, and that allows me to kind of um, control it from my phone um, so I don't have to go chasing it down uh, but it also gives much better kind of you know you can have variable speeds it's not just kind of on and off um, and again I'll, I'll throw up a, a video of, of that in, in motion uh, showing how, how nicely that works um, and again I wrote another another article uh, for Garden Rail um, about how I'd gone about changing it um, to, to remote control um, so yeah that was nice I didn't get to go see that one appear in a shop as I said we were in we were in lockdown when I wrote the wrote the article and um, haven't actually you know necessarily been and bought a magazine in a while um, most of them I just get digitally now so um, but that was nice yeah so it was a it was it was a bit it was as I say something different um, much much bigger um, it did prove that I quite liked the large scale of something it's, it's just a completely different different challenge um, so yeah as you as you probably have seen um, I've been working on other kind of 16 millimeter scale models since then um, so yeah it's um, it's nice to be able to do just different things different sizes different scales and and, 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 and flip between them um, uh, one of the problems I've I've had in trying to organise what order these videos come out in is that um, I'm not usually working on just one model at once. Um, so sometimes it's been difficult to remember which one I finished uh, first to get them in the in the right order um, because it's nice to be able to kind of move from different scales, different styles um, to give you to give you you know kind of a you never get bored with with just working on one model, especially if you hit something complicated or, or where there's a, there's a bit of a challenge. Um, so yeah, so that's the 16mm scale um, self-propelled skip from IP Engineering. Um, as I say, it's now 45mm uh, scale. I think it might actually end up going back to 32mm again. Um, I think I'm going to end up doing more with 32mm track than 45 uh, We'll see. But again, it's just a case of gently moving the, the wheels on the axle so you don't um, you don't damage the, the, the model. Um, and it should, should just work. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's a... Another another one I've finished. Um, we'll have to you have to wait till next week to see what whether it's a a kit I'm working on or a, or another model I've built. Um, I think we're actually onto another kit um, I've designed uh, next time, but we shall see.